I take everybody's rejects. Every, somebody, everybody gives up with them. I'll, t I'll take everybody. I'll take anybody, regardless of the background or the history. There isn't anybody that can't be, that can't be helped. There isn't anybody who can't contribute to something. We all this is John Mueller, a licensed family and child counselor and director of this ranch in Tahunga. The Autonomy Center for Independent Living, a big name for a unique program designed to treat severely disturbed adults, people who might otherwise be left to vegetate in one of our many state mental hospitals. We have um, really a three-stage program. Take them in first into a board and care setting where they learn how to personal hygiene, learn to care of themselves, wash themselves, soon they learn how to make a bed. They learn how to clean their room, then they get out and clean the common area, they have them clean their bathroom, then they help with the, the meals. After they've gotten into the routine of uh, doing a basic six to eight hour day work, then we take them down, we uh, bring them down to the ranch during the daytime and have them work down here. And we, uh, we do carpentry work here, we do welding, we work on the cars, the vehicles, the motorcycles. Then after that, we'll get them into a, we have houses and apartments where we put them in with minimum supervision where they either go to school uh, continue their education, their training, or else they go out and get a job and find a job, start working, and then from there on they go into the community themselves. Usually people that discharge from a hospital, they can't go into the community at all. It's too abrupt, it's too too quick, they're not used to it. And so they, they often end up back in the hospital. It's what we call the evolving door concept. What he's done for me is teach me everything from bring to fruition, what is in theory from fruit to nuts, everything from boiling eggs to learning how to cook, to manipulate a car, to get back on the road into a um, sheltered employee position for three years, and, uh, well, of course, on up to the present, where I'm... Seven years ago, David was considered a lost cause, unable to function in even the simplest setting. He returned me to school, and uh, I was continuing my degree in business administration. First of all, they learn how to work, period. If you only, if they only make minimum wage, they can make just as much money being on welfare. So you have to give them the opportunity to make at least a thousand dollars a month. I should for a thousand dollars a month, so they have an incentive to get a job and to work rather than just staying on welfare or being supported by your family or something like that. I'd like to meet Melody Rogers. Hello. Hi, Jay. How are you? How you doing? Jay's okay. one of my star graduates. Yeah. You're a star graduate. What are you doing now? Oh, I'm presently working for Fuller Brush at the time, and uh, I'm trying to make it on my own. Looks like you're doing pretty well. Yeah, I've been on my own for about two years. I've gotten a lot more confidence in myself and you know, how to talk to people and, you know, not being as, as shy as I was. And, you know, I like to... I was sort of, you know, unsure of myself at the time and, you know, about four years ago. And uh, I've learned to, you know, speak for myself and everything else, you know, like that. See, it's not just important just to learn a skate trade. First, they have to learn to work. We uh, start working at 9 o'clock to 12. We'll take a break for two hours at, um, at lunch. Then we'll start again at 2 o'clock, work till 5. If the uh, tenants want to change it, say, fine, as long as we get the six-hour day in. You, you say tenants. Now, yes. I know that's an important thing. Can you explain that to me? Well, too many of these people are used to be calling patients and residents, and every, they live in hospitals, facilities, you know. This is a home. They pay rent, so they're tenants, and that's very important. I think I've been called several times if I mistakenly call somebody a patient or a resident even, because I uh, say, well, wait a second, I pay rent here, I'm a tenant. That's important. You now, gotta give people dignity. They must have dignity. Also, I want to get away from basket weaving. I think too many organizations, they do basket weaving. I teach them things they cannot take any place and make a living at. I teach them things here they can make a living at. I have a job over at the school down the street. And you help uh, children? Well, they're not children, they're grown up kids. Oh, I they're see. They're retarded kids. And, and, and what do you do there? I'm a teacher's aide there. Sandy is 25 years old. She was forgotten in a hospital when John brought her to the ranch. Before I came out here, I was in another hospital, way back east. In east, in the east, in yeah. the east, in that mental institution. But this is very different than that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. How is it different? It's a lot different. But I mean, what, what, how does it feel? What, what are the difference? What's my feelings inside? Yeah, <laughs> about, about here, as opposed to that, that hospital. Well, it's different. 
What do you do, do different? What do you think you do different? Well, first of all, we create a family atmosphere, a healthy, productive family atmosphere. Uh, it's a combination of work and play, because you also must have fun. It, life is not work. We'll uh, climb in the school bus and go to the beach, spend a couple of days down Malibu on the water, or um, go out in the desert in the, in the winter and be out there for a few days, play sports, and uh, do things together. Clinical psychologist Dr. Eugene Landy. What John is doing is putting a world environment together, although it's not the real world, it is assimilated close to real world because it includes taking care of yourself, working every day, deriving a form of income, a form of expenses, having somebody do for you something which has never been done in a hot mental hospital, and that is actually give you something that needs to be accomplished for a part of the whole scene. Except the rice in a church where the wedding has been Lives in a dream This is Donna. Since her mother's death ten years ago, she has been in and out of mental hospitals trying to overcome her problems. Three years ago, she found John. All the lonely people they all come from? Hospitals are really stupid in a lot of ways, I feel, because it's like if I was to set up something therapeutic, I certainly wouldn't put barbed wire and fences and armed guards around it, you know, around the clock. I mean, I would, I would try to make an environment that was conducive to uh, getting back, you know, in touch with your feelings and things of that nature rather than feeling like you're in prison. A hospital setting reinforces person's illness. If you're in a hospital, you're sick. If you're in a, in, a, in a psychiatric hospital, you're crazy sick. And once you feel sick, once you feel down in that well, you can never get out. We have a long ways to go. We have a lot to learn here. Who supports this project? It's, it's a big operation. Our expenses are enormous. We, we, run it, I, we run this independently. It's not government grants, not government aid. I've never asked for any. If the families can pay, we try to get them to pay whatever they can. We have two staff for every residence, every tenant here. We have two staff members working with them. So there's a lot of supervision. It all boils down to living with yourself. I mean, I've lived in just about every type of situation imaginable. Not every, but just about, it seems like. And I found that one's hat or my happiness largely depends on how much I care about me. I wanted it for me, which is the most important thing of all. A person cannot uh, follow along a theoretical line without the motivation that goes with it. He makes them aware that they have the ability to feel good on them, about themselves, and what he's doing is setting it up for the future that they can do it without him. I mean, if they've got to have him for life, it's no good. Okay, that's one of the problems with hospitalizing, you know. Hospitals were meant originally to treat people, and what they have become, psychiatric hospitals have become, is simply a place to put people because they scare the rest of society. It's a throwaway society. We throw people away just like we throw tin cans away, you know. Everything is disposable. You have disposable people here. Well, there's no such thing. Everybody is contributing. I love to see people who everybody has given up on and said, there's nothing that can be done. You won't have anything to do with them. There's nothing to be done. And do something. Go it against the odds. I'm stubborn. I will stay with it. I will never give up. 